ministry of Apostle Adams Maji, a man called on God to preach deliverance to men from the oppression of the enemy. Get ready for a transformation and an encounter with God. Your life will never be the same again. Stay blessed. My exhortation this morning is for those who are tired of poverty. My exhortation is for those who are saying to God, Bless me that I in return will be a blessing to your children and to your kingdom. Amen, somebody. Let me quickly say this. Poverty does not glorify God in any way. There is nothing about poverty that resembles God or that speak of God. A poor man, the Bible says, has no voice. The Bible says the wisdom of the poor man is rejected because of his poverty situation. My prayer this morning is this. You will not end this year poor in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If your amen is the loudest, you are the one I'm talking to, it will work for you. Amen. Amen, somebody. I'm not referring to the church. I'm speaking to you as an individual. Jesus came to undo the works of Satan. 1 John 3 verse 8. He that sinned from the beginning is of the devil. For he that is of God does not sin. He said for this purpose was the son of God manifested. Why did Jesus come? That he may undo the works of Satan. And there are three major works of Satan. According to Bible, number one, sin. Number two, disease and sicknesses. Number three, poverty. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, this is the reason why the Son of God, Jesus, came. That he might destroy the works of Satan. So if God has destroyed sin in your life, has destroyed sickness in your life, why is still poverty there? Because the blood that saved you from sin, the blood that healed you from sickness and diseases, is the same blood that guarantees you prosperity. If you hear me this morning, I declare, your days of lack and want are over. Stand up and go to ten people, look at them and say to them, You will not be broke anymore. 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 You will not be Lift your hand and say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I, Adam Smudge. I told you when he had my broke days are over. My broke days are over. I will not end this year broke. I will not end this year. Poverty broke. is not my portion. Poverty is not my portion. Let me quickly say this. Let me quickly say it again. Poverty does not glorify God. A poor man can go to hell. A rich man can go to hell. A poor man can go to heaven. A rich man can go to heaven. What matters is whether you own money or money owns you. Did you hear what I just said? Your status of whether you are rich or poor does not determine you are going to heaven or not. Money is not evil. It is the love of money that is the root of all evil. You need money to pay school fees. You need money to pay house rent. You need money to pay car bond. We need money to build God's a house. You need money to live a good life. I decree from today, if you jump up with anger and say no more poverty, your broke days are over. No more poverty. You are not showing me, you are not showing me, you are not showing me. Jump up and shout it again. No more poverty. 
Amen, somebody. If these are the three major reasons why Jesus came, you have been saved, your sins are forgiven. You have been healed, your diseases and sicknesses have been healed. What about your poverty? Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Follow me, follow me quickly, please. Look at your Bible, underline it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he had anointed me to preach the gospel. Number one, this is the first thing Jesus says. The anointing upon his life is commissioned to do. To preach the gospel to the poor. That is how important your financial status is to God. Before he talked about healing, before he talked about broken hearted, before he talked about deliverance of the captive, before he talked about restoring eyes of the blind, he said, preach to the poor. I ask you, what is good news to a poor man? That if you don't have a car, you will have one. That if you are renting, you will soon buy your own house. That if you can't fit well, get ready, you will have more than enough. I came for 200 of you here. Yeah. If you are ready to receive this prophecy, you will not end this year, Paul. Amen. I receive it. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. You don't know what is happening here right now. You will not end this year, Paul. Amen. Go to 10 people and say, I receive it. 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 Oh my God, oh my God. Help somebody, Lord. Go to 10 more people. Stand up and say, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Second Corinthians 8 and verse 9. Follow me quickly. Those coming in, sit quickly at the back. Second Corinthians 8 and verse 9. For you know the grace of the law of what God. What is the grace upon Jesus? Jesus did not come here die poor. I told you some weeks ago, at his death, wise men brought him gifts. Imagine a newborn child. What were the gifts? Gold, sliver, frankincenses. A newborn child. What was the quantity of the gift? The Bible did not testify. But imagine a child at birth who had in his possession gold, sliver, frankincense. That is not a poor person. Amen, somebody. Amen. For we know the grace. What was the grace? That he was rich. When he died on the cross... The Bible says his garment, the Roman soldiers were fighting for it. They had to cast lost to see who will win the garment of Jesus. That is how expensive his garment was. I decree from today, your comfort is decree and release. Amen. Jump up and shout, I receive it. I receive it. We need to help you collect these things. Because if you don't have to receive it, prophecies will be going on and you are exempted from receiving them. Now get up and shout seven times. Poverty is not my portion. One to go. Poverty is not my portion. Say it out. Poverty is not my portion. It's important you do. Poverty is not my portion. Number four. Poverty is not my portion. Number five. Poverty is not my portion. Number six. Poverty is not my portion. Shout it number seven. Poverty is not my portion. Continue reading. That though he was rich, though he was rich, yet for your yet sake, for you and for me, for our sake, he became poor, that we through his poverty might become rich. Where did you get that poverty from? Because this is one of the reasons Jesus came, not only to save you from sin, heal you from sickness, but to make you rich. My God, lift your hand and say, Jesus came. Jesus came. 
the spirit to save me from sin to save me from to sin to deliver me from sickness to deliver me from and sickness and to make me rich and to make me rich that's why he came that we through his poverty might become rich why are you not yet let me prophesy that as you walk out of this church there will be a call amen there will be an email amen there will be a meeting with someone amen that will change your financial life forever amen i speak now under unction to 200 of you amen receive it in the name of jesus i receive it Amen, somebody. Amen. Psalm 113, verse 7 and 8. Follow me quickly. See what Jesus will do to the poor when he meets them. Psalm 113, verse 7 and 8. He raised up the poor out of the dust and, filled and, and lifted the needy out of the dunghill. What does he do with the poor? He raised them up. If you are here, you are poor. When you are poor, you are down. That's what the Bible is saying. A poor man is down. I decree in the name of Jesus. According to these scriptures, if you are here, you are poor. Receive the anointing to stand. Amen. I receive it. I, I, oh, God have mercy. Kamasakatola makataya. This is not from a harvest. This is not from the central bank, the reserve bank. This is not from the country economy. This is from heaven. Receive the anointing to stand. Amen. I receive it, Lord. I receive it, Lord. He raised up the poor from where? Out of the doors and lifted up the needy. Give me back the, uh, the verse we're reading, verse 7. And lifted the needy out of the dung heap. What does he do with them? He makes them to sit. Verse 8. That he may set him with princes. If you just shouted, you have caught it. Receive it. If your mouth shouted, Amen. Receive it. Amen. Stand up and go to temple and say, God is changing my position. God, stand up, stand up, go to temple. God is changing my position. 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 If you are not saying it, you don't expect and you don't believe it. God is changing my position. God is changing my position. God is changing my position. He raised the poor from the dust, lifted the needy to do what? To sit in life with great people. Very soon you will find yourself in a position, you will ask yourself, Am I dreaming? Amen. <laughs> That's why somebody just connected it. Am I the one? Is it me that is in the midst of these great men and women? Am I the one with these billionaires, with these governors, with this premier? Is it me? If you believe it, 36 of you run to somebody and say, I receive it. That's right, that's the anointing. That's right. That's right, that's right. Run to 36 people. I receive, I receive, I receive. When the Lord turned our captivities, we are like them that dream dreams. We are like them. What will he do? That he may set him with princes, even with the princes of these people. What am I talking about? I'm not talking about the prosperity that came because you have a master degree. It's important to go to school. I'm not talking about the prosperity that comes because you know the president. It's important to know people that matters. I'm not talking about the prosperity that comes because you are giving a tender for 50 million. No, I am talking about divine prosperity. I'm talking about a door that God will open for you that you do not naturally deserve it. 
I'm talking about the kind of job that God will give you that you are not qualified for. Amen. I am talking about God giving you a man, a woman that you do not deserve. Amen. Jump on your feet and shout and receive it. I receive it. Glory to God. What is divine prosperity? Write this down quickly. What is divine prosperity? Number one, prosperity that does not depend on the economy. Whether the economy is bad or is good, you are prospering. Job 22 verse 29. Prosperity that does not depend on the economy. Whether your country is undergoing recession or not, you are prospering. Your prosperity has nothing to do with where you live. You don't have to change location. You don't have to live to America or to Europe. If you are where God wants you to be, there is a hand that is upon you that will make you prosper in the midst of nothing. Amen. Jump up and shout, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Adam's magic. My broke days are over. My broke days are over. That's right. Don't change your confession. Things physically might not get any better. The more you keep declaring, the more it looks like things are getting difficult. But don't change your confession. There is he who answers prayers. He will not reject your request. I decree by unction as he has told me that before the end of this year, your financial life will be transformed. What is divine prosperity? Prosperity that does not depend on the economy. Job 22 verse 29. When men shall say there is a cast down, there we, we shall say. And what will happen? He said, he shall save the humble person. God will not save you from the situation that will consume the world until you change your confession in the midst of their nothing. When men are cast down, are they not casting them now? What is happening in my country everywhere? People that used to be more time millionaire, they are the ones now begging for money, for people to loan them money. They don't have it anymore. The whole world is undergoing recession. What shall you say, child of God? There is a lifting up. When God sees that you do not agree with what you are seeing, but you are speaking what he is saying, what did he say? He shall save the humble person. So it takes humility to declare something in the midst of nothing. Please get up and go to ten people. Say, I refuse to sink. I am on top in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm on top. I refuse Don't to sit sink. down. Don't sit down. Go I to them. Go to, to them. Sink. I am on top. I refuse to sink. Go to them. Lift your hand and say, I have the anointing. I have the anointing. Of divine prosperity. Of divine prosperity. Number two. What is divine prosperity? Prosperity that does not come from any man. A man may be used as a channel, but it's not the man responsible for the blessing. Please hear me very well. Because if a man lifts you up, the man can bring you down. I've said before, no man will ever lift you higher than where he is. The best any man can take you is close to where he is. And if they are angry with you, they will bring you down. But this is a prosperity that does not have the hand of man behind it. The people whom God is even using as channels, most of them are even your enemies. They do not know why they are helping you. They are doing it because there is a pause propelling them to do it. Listen, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 19. He said, whatever the Lord doeth, it shall be what? Forever. 
Lift your hand and say, In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I receive it. I receive it. Let's read it. Ecclesiastes 3, 3 verse 14, please. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 14. He said, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be. For how long? Lift your voice for how long? Forever. But when man is the one doing it, it is temporal. I am glad that the hand of God is behind my making. I do not know about you. If God is the one making you, you will never end your back at the back of life. I decree to you today, prosperity that has the hand of God behind it, let it become your portion. Amen. I command your gates to be open. Amen. Your doors to be open. Amen. In this month of supernatural praise, you will praise God for supplies. Amen. Jump up and shout, I receive it. I receive it. Number three. What is divine prosperity? Prosperity that does not depend on your jobs. Amen, somebody. I'm talking to someone now. Your salary may be 1,000 rand, but your flow of blessing at the end of the month is 50,000. That's what God does. For my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Not according to your paycheck, not according to the department, municipality where you work, it's according to his riches. So I speak to you by divine prosperity this morning. I don't care what your salary is, I decree by the hand of God from today at the end of every month, you will have more than supper, Lord. Amen. Jump up and catch it and receive it. I receive it. Number four, what is divine prosperity? Prosperity that cannot be handled by dark powers. I'm going to pray for some people in a short while. How many of you know there are prosperity that witches and wizards can eat? How can a demonic person collect money from you? I mean, you send money for them to train their children because they requested that they needed money to pay their children's school fees. Not knowing that they took the money from you and take it to the coven of witches and wizards and cause your finances and your financial flow was locked. No demon can do that to you when God is the channel of your prosperity. The prosperity I'm talking about, witches and wizards cannot handle it. If your money appears in the coven of witchcraft, their charms will be scattered. If the sun on your face, Jesus will appear. Amen. Stand up and lift your hand and say, No way. No way. This morning, as your hand touches this altar, and you live here from today, any currency, pounds, dollars, rand, naira, whichever kind of currency, your hand shall touch. It cannot be cost. Amen. Look at four people and say, they can't handle my prosperity. Darkness can't. They can't handle my prosperity. God put you in that office. Who is the man that is putting strange powders on your seat? Because they are envious of your position. That's why God located the people he located. Any attempt on you is an attempt to cease to live. No man stand against God and prosper. Whatever the Lord do it, it shall be forever. Number five. Write quickly. Prosperity that, that, that the more they hate you, the more you are prospering. Please lift your hand for one minute and just thank God for your prosperity. Jesus, thank Jesus, you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, no, Lord. No, 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 do it well. Thank you, Lord, for prosperity. If thank you can you, see Lord, it, do it well. Prosperity. Thank you, Lord, oh my God, for making me to do go it well. higher and higher, for my light to shine brighter and brighter. In the name of Jesus, in Lord, Jesus' Lord. name we pray. Amen. Exodus chapter 1 and verse 12. Prosperity. That the more they hate you, the more you are prospering. 
Listen to, them. Me, listen to me first before we read the scripture. I want to say this. We live in the world where winners have been converted to failures. Where blessed people have become beggars. We travel, we see people that those days we used to look at them as, Oh my God, we, I wish I could be like this person. Coming to you to ask you for food to eat or to pay children's school fees. We live in a very wicked world. I want you to know that. And some of you have experienced it firsthand. But hear me very well this morning. There is a prosperity from God that the more they hate you, the more you are multiplying. The more they take your money to use it for charm, the more money is coming to you. The more that witches and wizards will run away and say, this one, your own witch is more than our own. I decree to 126 of you as I say, they cannot handle you anymore. Kai Katabalaba. He says, You say it again. They cannot handle you anymore. Amen. Look at this. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied, the more they grew, and they were grieved. Your enemies will soon be grieved because of you. Amen. Why? Because they cannot handle you. They have tried to subdue you in the office, you are getting promoted. They try to destroy your children, they are getting prosperous. Amen. Stand up and stamp your feet three times and say, Holy Ghost fire! Holy Ghost fire! The first hundred people that will run and touch someone and shout fire, God is adverting the wicked plans of your enemies. Jesus. 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 Amen. Men of honor have been dishonored. Kingdom prosperity, if it's ever needed, is now. Because the man who made you in government is removed, you are removed. Your source of blessing is the premier. So as long as in his office, you are getting blessed. The day he ceases to be premier, you cease to be blessed. But I'm grateful to God. President come, president go. Premier come, premier go. Bank manager come, bank manager go. But Jehovah is everlasting. Amen. In the day is Jehovah. In the night is Jehovah. Amen. He's forever there. Forever, Amen. oh Lord. Your word is settled in heaven. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Number six. What is divine prosperity? Prosperity that is a product of divine ideas. Ideas that might not make sense, but is the key to your livelihood. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18. Quickly, we'll soon be done. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18. Let's read together. One to go. But thou... That's right. Let me tell you the truth. I said to you two weeks ago, the greatest source of breakthrough in the world today are ideas. People no longer go to school to use their certificate to eat. You go to school for the purpose of knowledge. The richest people in the world today are men and women who are functioning by the reason of the ideas that was birthed in them. Amen, somebody? If you are here, you are a child of God, and you are barren of divine ideas, something is wrong. The unbelievers can't be having ideas, and you do not have ideas. One idea from God can settle you and your generation for the rest of your lives. One idea! One 